Hey guys, welcome to Fishing in the Midwest. Today's technique is swim jigging. A lot of people are confused with the difference between swim jigging and regular jigging uh, with a regular bass jig, leadless guard jig. And the difference mainly is, is when you're swim jigging, you're working like a crankbait or almost like a uh, twitch bait, something like a fluke or maybe a, um, a rip bait. But what it is, it's mainly you're taking a jig, somewhat like this, and uh, with, the, with these simple characteristics of like a pointed nose to penetrate through the grass, weave in and out of grass, a uh, pretty heavy duty weed guard right here, just, and uh, usually some rattlers on there just to help the effect when you're jerking that swim jig. And today what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down specific types of swim jigs and which ones to use when you're bass fishing uh, in the summertime or early spring, especially in early spring when swim jigging can be extremely effective in the pre-spawn. Hope you guys stay tuned and enjoy our show. Before I show you guys how to work the swim jig in different conditions, whether it be laydowns, timber, grass, I'm going to show you the proper way to tie it and the proper tools that you'll need to do so. Right now we're using 15 pound test Suffolk Siege performance line and we're using a 3 8 ounce Booyah jig in a red and black with red flake. As you can see it's got the rattler and the weed guard. What we're going to start off by doing is how to tie this. So we're going to take our our strand right here, thread it through the nose, so it looks just like this. Really simple. Just how any or, any other uh, ordinary knot would start. And you're going to take that that same end of your line and thread it through again on the opposite side. All right. Then you're going to pinch that line a little bit. You want to make sure you've got you've got a pretty big loop when you're doing this. So it's something right, right about that. It's about 12 inches. Of line a little less and thread it, thread, it, thread it back through again. All right, so you've got a loop right here and another strand right there. And from there, you're just going to tie a simple basic knot with those two strands of line. So now that I've got that, I'll pull down and with this leftover loop I've got, I'm going to stretch it out just a little bit and I'm going to go over the jig. You want to make sure you go over, not under the jig or your lure. Go over the jig. Make sure you don't get any strands of silicone from your jig caught in your knot. Pull that silicone. Once you've got all that silicone pulled back, it should look something like this, as you can see. I'm just going to wet it down a little bit so it's easier to hinge. And I'm going to pull just like so. There you go. And there's your polymer knot. Simple, easy to use, and works great for heavy cover. This is a 100% knot, so it's not going to break at the knot tie. It's going to break usually if you've got some kind of kink in your line or scratch. Just before about to throw this bait, I want to show you how to rig up a trailer on your swim jig. A trailer is what makes this swim jig really active and what really gets the bass living on it. Right here we've got a net bait pocket craw, baby pocket craw in a watermelon spice color. And as you can see, it's really different from our swim jig. But what I like to do is I like to match the flake of the trailer with the jig. So our flake in the jig is a red flake along with this trailer right here. It's got a red flake on it. I like to have something that kind of stands out from the jig that kind of gets the bass kind of interested in, in either the jig or the trailer and creates a variety in your swim jig. A lot of people throw the exact same color uh, trailer as they would the jig, and sometimes, you know, you could you could be producing more bites if you were just to use a little bit different color that would stand out. As you can see, the the back of the craw really does blend in, and so do the tails. But when you flip it over, you've got that that bright tan. But like I said, match the flake of the jig and the trailer. It's going to have a much better effect. Uh, personally, that's that's what I've that's what I've experienced from uh, fishing a swim jig. The reel and rod that we're using today is the Corrado 200E7 baitcasting reel. When I'm swim jigging, I prefer to use a baitcasting outfit, uh, whether it be a cylinder or a low profile. And like I said, this one is just the 200E7 Corrado, Shimano Corrado. The rod that we're using today is a 7 foot medium heavy Shimano Crucial. Now, rods are really important when swim jigging. You want something with a fast tip something that is long, that you can really launch your jig out there and get it out pretty quickly. Um, I've heard of guys using 7'2", heavy uh, rods, using them, 
and getting them in and out of the, uh, the weeds pretty easily. This one right here is just a seven foot, medium heavy, Shimano Crucial. Now, right now I'm gonna show you how to work this jig. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna throw it out there looking for any type of vegetation. I'm, I'm throwing it right into a bed of vegetation right now. I'm letting it sink a little bit and then I'm working it. And as you can see, I'm reeling it in, and kind of twitching it at the same time. Kind of like you would with, like I said, a jerk bait or a crank bait or something like that. What it's going to do is it's going to bounce that jig head up and down while it still swims a little bit. What I'm going to do is maybe I'll stop and start it. This thing, keep doing it. It's really different from fishing a regular jig. Now, if you've ever caught your bluegill fish with like a jig and a, a plastic on the back of it, it's very similar. Like I said, I'm keeping my rod tip down at the butt of the rod in my shoulder so when I get a bite I can lock right in there and then set the hook upwards. A lot of guys will also set the hook sideways or well, let's say they'll get a bite in the rip like this. What it's doing is it's pulling the, the, the lure straight out of the fish's mouth without even having that hook contact with the upper lip. What you want to do is you want to pull up. What that's going to do is it's going to pull the jig head up along with the hook right in the roof of the mouth. And when you're starting to catch fish with a slim jig and you see the hook is right on top of the jaw, that's when you know you're getting a good hook set. And those are the type of fish that aren't going to burst off. You know, let's say you, you, know, you get a good hook set below, it's on the side of the lip, that fish shakes, boom, there goes the swim jig. Now, positioning a jig when you're, when you're swim jigging is pretty key. You want to make sure you're throwing in the right areas and make sure you're not throwing just in sand areas where j there's just weed. Also think timber as well. Now, you know, when you're fishing a twi twitch bait or a fluke, you're going to be looking for a lot of vegetation, a lot of weeds, and a lot of brush lay down, stuff like that. And that's the exact same thing you want to look for when you're throwing a swim jig. Right now, I'm facing a shoreline where there's low-hanging trees, there's a couple lay downs, there's some, I can tell you there's some logs that are kind of in here. And along with this, there's some stalks of hydrilla that are sticking up. And I'm just going to throw as close as I can to that, even, even on top of those weeds sometimes. And I know I can get it out of there because I'm using that specially designed um, jig head that's pointed right there and it can penetrate right through that grass. And that's just key when you're, when you're throwing these jigs is you want to get it as deep as possible, almost like you would flipping the mats, you know. You want to get it right where those bass are. You want to make sure you're going to where the bass are and the bass aren't coming to you.